everybody. This is Pam Coey. I'm about to show you how I took eight really ugly slot boards and turned them into these eight final paintings. So I hope you enjoy the process. You're going to see my slot boards, uh, working on them all at one time. And then I'll show you the final works as we go through this very long series for YouTube. Thanks very much. Please comment below the videos. Hey, everybody. I'm going to be continuing to work on my series of eight disparate paintings and hopefully get them to cooperate with one another and uh, work together in a series. This is the one I have right now. Uh, it's my slot board number eight. I did move it forward a little bit. You can see now there's some shapes, but there's also still a lot of that underpainting that was the slot board. And because I feel like um, you know, you can kind of go endlessly in terms of the play stage, but I feel like there's plenty going on here in terms of like that play stage. The play stage for me can be one layers, 10 layers. It doesn't really matter what it, what it needs to do for me is just be haphazard, chaotic, spontaneous, and that can go on forever or it can go on for 10 minutes. It doesn't really matter. Uh, sometimes the more layers you have, you know, you can have a lot more history to dig into, but um, because I tend to be kind of impatient if I know what I want the series to be about, which right now my uh, cohesive threads are that they're all 12 by 12 inch panels. They're all going to be one medium, which is acrylic mixed media, possibly some collage. Uh, the color palette has been determined and I have my color palette uh, figured out. It's right here. It was inspired by uh, our granddaughter's palette on her painting. So I did a little swatch here. This shows me kind of my range of colors. It's quite a lot of colors. And, um, and then the other thing that I'm, I'm very interested in for this series, I think, is, um, you know, I think about the painting that Willa did. She's only three. And I'm thinking, um, trying to put my mindset back into, like, what does that represent for me? And it does represent kind of going back in time. And because I love letters and numbers, I'm thinking in terms of simple alphabet, like typography. I don't think I've ever done a series that uh, was the shapes were based on letters and numbers and things like that. So I think that's why I'm, I'm really drawn to that for this one, partially because of the painting, the original painting that I was inspired by. So I'll turn my camera down and just show you how I proceed. And it. it I could be in this next stage, which I still consider this to be play because I don't really know where it's going, but I'm also prepared for it to quickly turn into explorer. And what I mean by that is um, it's a risk taking time, but if I start to recognize a direction that I'm liking, then I'm just going to go with that. And, you know, some of these paintings may develop quickly and others may not. I just don't know. That's the fun of it. All right. All right. All right. A mechanical pencil that I don't have to uh, sharpen at all and you know there are decisions to be made even here and the decisions are you know do I want this to go this way this way and become a D this way and become a P do I want it to you know border the edge do I want it to be away from the edge do I want it to come off the edge there are just so many things that you know you could be thinking about so I think actually I will have this one go off the edge and I'm making a B. A B has meaning for me because um, it's, it's the letter of my husband's name. So um, it's always nice when you can make choices that, you know, there, there can be a connection to something very meaningful to you. It just makes the entire painting more personal, but I don't always do that. Um, lately I've been doing that, but I'm just saying I don't always have to do that. Okay, so once I see where that letter is, I don't want to make too many decisions before I paint this in. And there's no shortcut to painting it, so most likely I will be fast forwarding as I go through this. Um, the only decision I really have to make right now is the color. And um, the color can change many, many times, so at this point it doesn't even really matter. But I think I might go with dark because it's really going to stand out. I've got some dark over here, and I kind of like... Uh, I like how this dark looks, and I also like this deep red. Um, or I could mix, you know, um, could go with a gray. A lot of decisions here, not that it matters. Again, I'm playing, and but being an adult who's playing, 
Um, I, I guess I'm just considering, you know, how I want to get this started and without thinking too much, I think I will use black because I do think that there's going to be an awful lot of sanding throughout the series. And, and I know what happens when you sand, if you guys haven't like done a lot of that yourselves, um, when you sand, things can change and change and, uh, they look distressed, which I love. I love a distressed surface. So that may be another unifier throughout the series. I mean, I'm, I don't think I'll be just distressing one board. I do think I'll be distressing them all to a certain extent. So there, as I go along, you know, there could be more and more things that tie this together. So I'm going to put this on and I want to be careful about where so even in the play stage it doesn't mean you can't do something that's highly rendered which is what i'm doing here um, a letter or a number or a symbol it, it can be highly rendered meaning that you're trying to really get it to look like something um, but it doesn't have to be but it can be done in play i'm playfully putting this letter here not knowing whether it will stay, whether it will change. And, and that's the play part of it. I don't know where I'm going. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm using my painter's edge here, which really comes in handy. It's not a perfect edge, and I don't want it to be necessarily a perfectly crisp edge. Uh, I can have some imperfections to it. That would be fine. Um, they're all choices that you make along the way. I find this painter's edge does a good enough job. Like I, you know, if I really wanted this to be a crisp, perfect line, um, and, and that's something that may come later. But for right now, this painting has so far to go that I'm not going to waste my time and use tape and tape it off or any special thing. I'm just going to use a painter's edge. Okay, so there's that, and the cool thing about when you do sand back is that these little imperfections of the edge, they just don't matter because you're sanding paint away. Uh, and so you can be a little bit sloppy, not being sloppy per se, but I mean, you could be a little bit sloppy and have some happy things up here. So now I've got um, part of my letter here. And now I've got a curve, so this will be done. I'm doing it with thick paint. Notice I'm going for opacity. I could be thinning this paint out, but right now I'm going for thick. I do like to sand into thick paint. I'm going more slowly as I get to the edge. So you may not realize that even during the play stage, sometimes I'm going slowly. And a lot of my work may look like I did it, you know, really quickly, but when in fact it could be just the opposite. I'm gonna come down here. Now this letter does come off the edge of the board, which I like. I like that feeling when some, this is a very big shape on this 12 by 12 inch panel. And, you know, it's tall and it's got very thick lines. And amidst all this chaos and crazy values and crazy colors, You just can't miss it. It's a dark value. Sometimes I'll turn this board. This is where kind of good quality brushes can be important when you're trying to do fine work like this. Now I have a flat, this is a flat brush. I could be using a round, but I feel pretty comfortable using a flat, even going around a curve, which is kind of a maybe counterintuitive, but I 
maybe it's because I've, I just have always leaned toward the flat brush that I've used it enough and it's not technically too challenging for me to go around a curve. I feel like I have more control with the flat than I do with a round brush. Okay, so right off the bat, you know, that does give this some structure. And even though I'm not trying to be perfect, perfect with this, um, if I can clean up an edge, I will. Because it feels right. So I'm often going to be talking about what feels right to me because that's what this is all about. Um, even when you play, you know, you're doing what feels good and that's going to be the best way to, to listen to what you're all about. Okay. What I like about this too is that, you know, depending on the orientation of this painting, if I turn it around and now it's a backward P and I kind of like that, that's fun. So you can see that this one now has overlapping shapes this overlaps this, which overlaps this, this overlaps that, which overlaps this. And, and when that happens, you start to get this feeling of depth, which is really fun. I've got this interesting little border here, and then I've got this triangle here. So already uh, I'm liking that quite a bit. And um, I thought what I would do with this one. So all of my panels right now are at about the same uh, uh, level of development, which is very, uh, at much the beginning phase like they're not they're not none of them are very far along and so I thought I would do I've got all these shapes that I've cut out I don't know like if they'll have any any uh, place in this painting or not but you can see I've cut some gigantic ones out they actually got blown up a little too large and I started to make this one notice like these really caught my eye and I want to just see now these are these would be a number right I've got and they're not like they're not too recognizable like there was a six here but because I only cut part of it away I love how these fit together like I love this shape and I love this shape love hear me hear me saying that I love that now again I I could set them here there are a lot of places I could set this I I don't have to have them both I could have just one I could place one down here. I kind of thought about that. And what I like about this is that it kind of breaks the whole painting up into this grid, which I love grids, right? So um, that might be something I will try. What I like also, what I'm noticing is that this line doesn't line up, say, with the top of the this letter. If it did, like if it were down here, I wouldn't like it as much. So I like the fact that we've got different um, horizontals. There's a horizontal here. There's a horizontal here, a vertical there. Um, these are all things that, you know, you start to, to think about. And, and these three letters, the B and the six, could become my repeaters, like my thread that I go through all of these paintings. I don't think I will, but I'm just saying that they could. And I do love these shapes. I love them together. And I just like how they interact with one another. One is related to the other. And... So I think that I will actually go for this because why not? I'm playing and um, I'm just reacting as I move these shapes around. So again, I trace around my pieces here. Sometimes a pencil will be hard to see um, against a dark surface. And I do have a white pencil. I just have to find it. Because Sometimes I'll bring that out when I go over a dark area because it's just so hard to see it. These marks are not really meaningful. I just want to be able to see where I'm going. It's going on where it's rather dark. So. I just feel like these are very interesting and unusual shapes. I'm adding geometry. So that's what these pieces are doing right now. I had a lot of curvilinear chaos, you know, haphazard business going on. And I'll set these aside. And then I just have to decide, like, well, what color? And uh, hmm. so this, this is right now kind of dominant because it's big, bold shape, big shapes and, and solid colors. 
and uh, quite liking this red color. 